Hello everyone, welcome back to Auto Trend TV. I am Yuvi Prajesh again from Lakshmi Nissan Showroom in Chennai today, and I am here with the brand new Nissan Magnite XV Premium Turbo Manual Variant. The Nissan Magnite is officially the most affordable yet value for money compact SUV launched in the Indian market currently. Despite that fact, the Magnite seems to impress quite very well. This year is the top spec XV Premium variant without the optional tech pack, but even without the tech pack. This variant offers quite a lot of fancy features as standard, and I'm here to take you through all the details of this brand new Nissan Magnite top spec variant. First, let's start with the exteriors. Of course, from the side profile, the Nissan Magnite impresses very well because the proportions are near perfect. Despite not being very flamboyant or radical, the Nissan Magnite is actually one very well designed compact SUV, which looks good from all angles. Adding to the great stance are the 16-inch machine-cut alloy wheels. Which have a funky design theme to them. Of course, these are not the widest in its class with 195 section rubber. The good part is that all variants, including the entry level XE, get the same size tires and wheels. Talking about the front, of course, the Nissan Magnite has good presence thanks to the octagonal large grille and the sleek and sharp headlamps. The Nissan Magnite gets all LED lighting with LED DRLs that have an L shape to them, and even the fog lamps are LED units. Even the turn indicators integrated into the headlamps are proper LED strips. So from the front, the Nissan Magnite definitely does not look like a compact SUV and has good presence to it. Talking about other design bits, all variants of the Nissan Magnite get the same octagonal grille with the chrome brackets. However, a dual tone finished front bumper is available only on the top spec variants with a four skid plate kind of finish. The other standard feature on the Nissan Magnite entry level variant are the silver finished roof rails, which are actually functional and can withstand up to 50 kilograms of weight. The ORVMs of this top spec variant are finished in glossy black, and this top spec variant also receives plenty of chrome detailing, including full chrome door handles. All variants of the Nissan Magnite get Magnite badging on the front fenders, and the ORVMs also house the cameras for the 360 degree around view monitor. Another point I'd like to point out on the Magnite are the door handles. The design of the door handles are almost similar to that seen on the Renault Triber. However, the doors seem significantly heavier than the Triber. All the chrome and silver finish on the Nissan Magnite are very tastefully done and complement the overall design quite very well. That said, the Nissan Magnite does not offer the most demanded fancy feature in the Indian market today: an electric sunroof, which is actually pretty useless in Indian conditions. These here are the tail lamps of the Nissan Magnite, which, even though not being LEDs, get a split design and immediately remind me of the globally sold Nissan Juke. They have a 3D effect to them and look actually very, very good. In fact, the Nissan Magnite looks great from the rear as well. On the tailgate, you get the turbo badging, including the centrally positioned Magnite badging just below the brand new Nissan logo. The rear bumper too gets a dual tone finish, which are not available only on the entry level XE variant. However, you can see that you get four reverse parking sensors as standard from the entry level variant itself, whereas the reverse parking camera is mounted in the number plate housing on the XV and XV Premium variants. The tailpipe is neatly concealed under the rear bumper, and there is decent amount of underbody protection as well. Another good thing about the Nissan Magnite is that a rear windshield wiper, washer, and defogger, along with reverse parking sensors, are standard across all variants, including the entry level XE. So that was all about the exteriors, and immediately the Nissan Magnite seems to impress on the outside at least. So now let's just get inside this car to check out the features, comfort, and space offered on this top spec XV Premium variant. Yes, folks, I'm right now inside the brand new Nissan Magnite XV Premium top spec variant, and this is how the interior looks like. Well, at first glance, you can see that this is an all black cabin, but still. The overall design has been tastefully done. Everything is perfectly ergonomic, and uh, say the center console is also tilted towards the driver for uh, driver-focused feel. Now, talking about the features and feel, of course, you get this rather brilliant and uh, great feeling steering wheel on this compact SUV. This is uh, kind of reminding me of other expensive Nissan cars abroad, and you can see that it also gets leather wrapping with contrast white stitching. It is also a flat bottom steering wheel, so it also gives you kind of a sporty feel when you look at it. You also get cruise control on the top spec variants, which is located on the right side, and on the left side you get the steering mode audio controls, and on the right side you also get the controls for controlling the TFT instrument cluster screen, which I'll just show you in a bit. And uh, the initial first impression is that this is 
a rather well built and decently good looking interior the top part of the dashboard gets a sort of very dark brownish uh, tinge to it and uh, this part is not textured it may look textured due to the hexagonal pattern on it but still it is not textured it is a perfectly smooth surface which is uh, kind of nice looking but i would have preferred a dual tone option for the interior but still the overall feel of the cabin is pretty robust and it definitely feels tough perfectly fitting a compact suv the top part of the dashboard of course as i already said gets a sort of soft ish feel but still everything here is hard plastic except for the uh, fabric part wrapped on the door pads so as you can see uh, this is kind of a dark gray kind of finish and also gets contrast white stitching this is really good and feels actually pretty comfortable so that is quite thoughtful and even this center armrest gets the very same gray finish however this armrest is non openable it is a fixed one and uh, maybe shorter people will absolutely find this armrest useless because it does not uh, adjust as well and the design is kind of focused towards the front passenger instead of the driver so it is kind of uh, awkward but still it is completely okay that's because taller people can absolutely be comfortable over here now talking about the available features well let's just start with the steering wheel of course you get tilt adjustment as standard however no telescopic adjustment which is quite fine almost all compact suvs except for the eco sport uh, does not get telescopic adjustment which is totally fine and uh, coming towards the driver door you get all four power windows with only the driver window getting one touch up and down function you also get uh, these familiar looking door handles which again are seen on the Renault Triber as well and are also finished in the exact same silver finish so everything is quite fine well you can see that on the right side of the steering wheel you get the cruise control uh, speed limiter kind of function and over here is the electronic stability program traction control turning off button and this here is the regular headlamp leveler scroller so everything here is decently built the overall fit and finish the quality levels are much better than what we have seen on prototype cars so this is a positively good thing now coming to the regular functions of course you get the headlamp uh, stock on the right side with the fog lamp uh, included in this itself no separate button for the fog lamp and on the left side you get the typical wiper stock which also gets intermittent function so this is quite good however this car does not get automatic headlamps or automatic wipers which i find not so perfectly useful for most of the conditions in india but still it is okay now this here is the center console of course you get the very same large 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system we have seen on the renault triber however this ui is quite very very upgraded and also gets wireless android auto and apple carplay which is quite a great thing uh, so the advantage is that you don't have to haggle with wires and connectivity problems so uh, instead of just showing you around let me just uh, try starting everything well at least turning on the power and this is how everything looks like and this is the pierce the stones this is very very colorful this tft instrument cluster this itself is a seven inch display for the instrument cluster and the animations are pretty fancy and very very attractive i mean some people may not like it because it may be kind of too cartoonish for some people but still i personally like it and it is very very attractive colorful and provides you with all the details you need this here is the speedometer in a digital format and around that is the ring for the tachometer so everything is very very well integrated well designed as well on the left side you get the engine temperature gauge in a semi-circular design and on the right side you get the fuel gauge which is also in a semi-circular design you can see that there are three rings in total so it is very very well designed well integrated nothing to fault over here now the controls for this instrument cluster is on the right side of the steering wheel and changing the screens will <laughs> will uh, enlarge the circles so as to uh, provide you with the details you need in a larger format as you can see this is all about the fuel economy so the fuel economy uh, ring becomes larger and you get the instantaneous efficiency meter at the center on the right side is the average kilometer per liter average mileage and lower down here is the speedometer so the focus clearly is on fuel economy and pressing this button again 
will show you the trip meter details and there is also a trip meter B as well so pressing the OK switch lower down will change the trip to B and of course you also get a trip meter A so you can absolutely reset this meter uh, according to your needs and the tachometer has become kind of smaller and so is the instantaneous efficiency meter and the average mileage meter the speedometer too is now lower down so uh, this is a very very well designed instrument cluster surprisingly so very good in terms of design and finesse uh, it is even better than certain more expensive cars with say a color TFT screen so that is what I would like to say I really like this and changing the display again will give you the tire pressure monitoring system yes this is a compact SUV the Nissan Magnite also provides tire pressure monitoring system kind of similar to certain other expensive cars so that is quite a good thing uh, however there is no pressure uh, say the perfect pressure is not visible instead it just displays okay that is all that's all you want to know so that is all about this now pressing this button again will give you the settings for dimming control and so on and of course we are back to the main screen again so that was all about the instrument cluster coming to the center console of course this here is the 8 inch uh, touchscreen system which i already said is from the renault driver and kind of reminds you so much of the renault driver because of these buttons over here these are toggle kind of switches which are kind of similar again and overall quality is also pretty decent the touchscreen system especially is very very good let me just show you the menu over here so this here is the menu this UI is very very good and it does not lag well not so much and uh, talking about the reverse parking camera let me just uh, try turning on again so the instrument cluster is again turning on and let me just activate the reverse and this is how the 360 degree camera works so there are cameras on all four sides of the car including the front grille the rear bumper and there are also cameras uh, just under the ORVM so all these cameras work in tandem in providing you a complete image however the overall quality could have been decent that's what I would like to say it is just about okay nothing so special but still it is fine so you also get a front view if you are not in reverse gear so this is kind of helpful in maneuvering in tight areas so that is also quite good again so that was all about the reverse parking camera let me just get back so this here is the main screen again now talking about smartphone integration you also get wireless android auto and apple carplay which is again exceptionally good feature on such a compact suv with this facility you of course don't have to haggle and uh, carry your wires cables and all for android auto or apple carplay so that is quite very very thoughtful and let me just get back this here is a driving eco which actually judges your driving habits the acceleration gear shift anticipation and braking to give you a proper score for your driving so as you can see this is just a brand new car and it has been barely driven so it ha it has just around 40 out of 100 in terms of score which is completely okay now getting back to the main screen so this here is the main screen again this ui may be slightly slow when you compare with other say modern and uh, a few other rivals but still it is quite feature loaded and very very good talking about the climate control console of course as you can see the three knobs may be quite similar to the renault triber however the displays are at the center of these uh, three rotary knobs which is quite nice and kind of reminds me of much more expensive Nissans being sold abroad as you can see the graphics too is very very crisp and let me just turn it on so this is how everything looks like the temperature is displayed at the center of this center rotary knob whereas the fan speed is on the left side and the directional flow is on the right side so even if you change the directional flow everything is visible in this itself so it is very very crisp very very nice and perfectly precise now if i turn on the headlamps of course everything is backlit now so you get this uh, front windshield defogger over here the ac button is over here and just uh, below that is the uh, internal and external recirculation uh, kind of button and this here is the auto climate control button so everything is very very well thought out perfectly ergonomically placed and focused towards the driver so that is what i like about the nissan magnite just below that here is a tray for your smartphone if you opt for the tech pack of the nissan magnite you will get a wireless charging pad over here but this does not have that which is completely okay 
because uh, well you obviously have to use your wires to charge your uh, smartphone but still it is completely okay just below that is the push button start which is again reminding you of the Renault driver and is located on the left side of the driver which is quite okay easy to access however you will have to um, say be careful if you have kids in your car now talking about other things which remind me of the Renault driver is this transmission lever as you can see the design the typical feel of the gear shifts everything is kind of similar to the Renault driver and uh, that may be a good thing or not that depends on perfectly your uh, view however the good part is that even this handbrake lever and the gear lever boot get a sort of art leather finish with the contrast white stitching so that is quite nice again now talking about other storage options of course you get this sort of uh, cavity behind the gear lever this here is the usb charging port which also can be used to connect your smartphone and you also get a 12 volt charging socket this here is another pocket where you can store your smartphone and it is very very large and well coming just uh, beside the handbrake lever you get two cup holders which are very very large in size and pretty deep as well so you can pretty much store your one liter bottles over here as well as against to the large one liter bottle holders on every door so everything is very very well thought out storage options convenience comfort everything is pretty good and the glove box is exceptionally large you get a 15 liter large glove box which is also cooled in terms of function and also gets illumination so how great is that you can pretty much keep your small bags in here itself so that is quite good talking about the seats these are very very comfortable these are fabric seats of course no leather finish or anything over here the pattern is quite nice and tasteful and the comfort to the overall side bolstering the support everything is pretty good as well and the good part is that you get four adjustable headrests as standard from the entry level variant itself so that is very very good in terms of safety however this center armrest is available only on the top spec variants of the nissan magnite so that is a thing to be reminded and talking about other good stuff you of course get high digestible driver seat from the mid spec variant itself let me just show you the lever and this here is the lever for the height adjustment talking about these levers these are very very well built and have a good solid feel to them if you want to use them actually this here is the height adjustment lever and the recline lever is over here somewhere at the back so it is very very well thought out well in terms of ergonomics as well coming towards the roof of course you get a day night switch for the irbm which is available from the mid spec variant itself the irvm may be kind of small in terms of size for a compact suv but still it is okay however i am not actually satisfied with the quality of this irvm because as you can see it looks kind of cheaper kind of uh, befitting the renault triber instead of this uh, nissan magnite so that is completely acceptable though uh, and coming to the sun visors of course you get vanity mirrors for both the driver and the passenger alike and that is quite an exceptional thing the interior lights of course are yellow bulbs and you get three bulbs individually for the front seats however for the rear you get only one interior illumination which is quite acceptable and typical standard of this class so that was all about the front part of the nissan magnite's cabin i think that despite being built to a cost there has been no compromises in terms of ergonomics comfort or convenience and even in terms of features it is exceptionally well loaded including this touchscreen system and uh, the instrument cluster which is again fantastic so let's just get to the back seat right now yes folks i'm in the back seat of the brand new nissan magnite compact suv this here is the top spec xv premium variant and this is how the dashboard looks like from the rear seat it may not look so flamboyant or exceptional in terms of design however it is definitely satisfying especially for the cost and uh, talking about the rear seats of course the space is surprisingly very very expansive i have adjusted the driver seat for my height which is 511 for reference and even after that i have a whole lot of space to stretch out it kind of immediately reminds you of the tata nexon in terms of the seating comfort the space and the overall feel over here that's because apart from the legroom you get really good amount of under thigh support as well well not up to nexon standards but still 
it is definitely one among the better back seats in this compact SUV segment. And you also get rear AC vents as standard from the uh, mid-spec variant itself, which is quite good again. And these are also having decent amount of adjustment as well. So that is quite good. Just below the rear AC vent, you also get a 12 volt charging socket, which can be quite handy for the rear seat passengers. However, it could have been better if Nissan had provided a smart charging port instead of a 12 volt port. Now talking about these rear seats, of course, you can see that the rear seats may not be as wide as you expected, but still you get rear adjustable headrests as standard from the entry level XE variant itself, which is quite good again. And of course, you also get this center armrest on the top spec variants, which also get a couple cup holders and a slot to park your smartphone. So this is available only on the top spec variants. The entry level variants does not get this. Overall, in terms of ergonomics and comfort, this is a very, very good backseat to be in. That's because even the door pads get this fabric finish as seen on the front doors. And it is very, very comfortable and soft to place your elbows. The silver finish is also carried forward to the back doors and even the door handles are exactly the same. However, my only grouse is that these pull type door locks are kind of passe for today's age and time. But still it is completely fine. That's because this car is going to be offered at a great price. So that was all about the back seats. Let me just uh, get to the boot to check out the actual luggage space. Opening the boot of the Nissan Magnite, of course, all variants get electric boot release and this year is the 336 litre luggage capacity as standard on the Nissan Magnite. The overall capacity is slightly larger than the Vitara Brezza and the top spec variants also get 60-40 split folding function for the rear seats. On the left side, you get a boot lamp along with bag hooks on either side, which can be quite convenient for your shopping bags. It is good to see that despite being the most affordable compact SUV, Nissan has focused so much. Of course, folding flat the rear seats, you don't get an entirely flat floor. However, it is going to be better in terms of flexibility. Opening the boot floor, of course, you get the 15-inch steel space saver spare wheel, which is colored in red, so as to remind you that this is only a temporary wheel to be used in emergency situations. The spare wheel size also remains the same on the entry-level XE variant. Now let's close the boot of the Nissan Magnite which gets a convenient handle and the tailgate isn't too heavy. So that was all about the luggage space and boot capacity of the Nissan Magnite. Let's just check out the engine bay. Before opening the bonnet of the Nissan Magnite, I'd like to point out that even on this top spec variant, the Nissan Magnite does not get a dead pedal for your left foot. Now pulling this lever in the driver footwell opens the bonnet, which houses the turbo petrol three cylinder engine. So here we are. And opening the pretty lightweight bonnet of the Nissan Magnite, you get to see the 1 liter 3 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which produces around 100 PS of maximum power through either a 5 speed manual transmission or a CVT automatic gearbox. On the manual variant, this engine produces 160 Newton meters of torque, whereas on the CVT variant, the torque has been reduced to 152 Newton meters. Despite being a 3 cylinder, this engine is very refined and there is ample amount of sound deadening material in the engine bay and in the cabin as well. For better crash protection, you can see these large crash beams integrated into the structure of the Nissan Magnite. As a result, despite being based on the Renault Triber, it is safe to expect the Nissan Magnite to score better in terms of crash worthiness. So that was all about the brand new turbo petrol engine on the Nissan Magnite. A detailed drive review of this turbo petrol manual variant will be uploaded soon. So now let's talk about the pricing. So that was all about the brand new Nissan Magnite top spec XV premium non-optional variant. Overall, it seems like an excellent all-rounder with very good space and comfort, decent levels of quality, sharp and proportionate looks, an adequately powerful engine, an impressive list of standard safety features, and a lot more premium fancy features on this top spec variant. Yes, there are a few shortcomings, like the interior quality, which may be adequate. However, it definitely does not match up to the standards of the Kia Sonnet, the Tata Nexon, or the Ford Eco Sport. But given the groundbreaking pricing, it seems like the Nissan Magnite could easily give premium hatchbacks like the new i20, the Maruti Beleno and the Tata Altros a run for their money while also competing against the standard compact SUVs. So do let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this brand new Nissan Magnite. Meanwhile, this is Viprajesh signing off. See you on another video. Thank you for watching.